YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's engraving here with another video and another episode of NFL question from subs and another special episode featuring our guy Ken aka film study Ravens y'all check him out on Twitter y'all check out his website y'all follow his podcast do all that good stuff show love for Ken because he shows a lot of love to the flock and y'all already know this dude he, he been putting on for a long time a long time so he been bringing that information, that super detailed information. He is great with the analytics, with the numbers, all that stuff. He'll break down stuff that you ain't even know could be broken down. But anyway, this episode of NFL Question from Subs features him. And of course, what Question from Subs is, is a series where you can ask me any NFL question. And we answer it in a video just like this. And if you want to be part of it, send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. Or for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. You want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron? Go to patreon.com slash engravingvids. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the second edition of Questions from Subs featuring Film Study Ravens. And sticking with the offensive line, uh, next question came from my guy, Brian Williams. He said, what's up, Engraven? Been a while. Hope all is well with you and the fam. My question is, do you envision a signing by Baltimore? And no, he wasn't talking about Jalen Smith or Stephon Gilmore from yesterday. He said, I'm thinking for the offensive line. Uh, we're going to get Stanley and Phillips back at some point this season. And right now we're kind of plug and playing in people. I know the Ravens love versatility in their players, but you always uh, say this phrase, play them to their strengths. Uh, the player I'm suggesting is Rick Wagner. He knows the Ravens organization and how they operate and knows what it means to play like a Raven. And most importantly, he's a natural right tackle. To be honest, I like Makari and Alejandro, but I don't see them in Baltimore beyond this season. What are your thoughts? Also, hope we can do business in the future. You and his fam, stay safe. Appreciate it, Bryant. Um, with Rick Wagner, I would, I don't know, I, I would be a little worried, and maybe this is me looking too much into it. Um, but I know that he was uh, considering retirement. Um, so I know, uh, and I've seen a lot of players, a lot of football players say it. When you start considering retirement, you start thinking about it. Oh, it, it, it's going to happen sooner or later. Like, that's why I don't expect Jimmy Smith after this year. I don't expect him to be back. I think he's going to go ahead and hang it up. Um, but with Rick Wagner, you know, I've heard about Rick Wagner. I've heard about people saying Mitchell Schwartz, too. Um, but I just, with Mitchell Schwartz, I'm not sure if he's fully healthy right now. Uh, but with Rick Wagner, I would just be worried that uh, he, maybe he not might not be in the best of shape if he was considering retirement. Because if you're considering, like, hanging it up, you might be relaxing. You might be chilling, like, oh, okay, well, I ain't got to work out today. I'm going to take today off. I'm going to take it easy. Um, but Rick Wagner, I would just, I, I would be worried about that. How, how would you feel about Rick Wagner, Ken? Especially with him having been here before. Uh, yeah, I, I loved Rick tackle as I loved Rick Wagner as a right tackle in Baltimore. And uh, you know, if it, it really is a case of it, has he kept the weight on in a lot of ways? Um, mm. A lot of offensive linemen they immediately lose weight as soon as they retire. You know, we say Marshall Yonda biking oh, doesn't even look like the same guy. I mean, that's that's right. not a guy who's ever coming back. Um, <laughs> Mitchell Swartz is another guy who's lost a ton of weight. And so I don't, I don't Indeed. think he's a guy who's, who's going to be coming back, or if he does, it would take time. Um, part of the problem with the whole NFL this year is that just uh, reassimilating um, players to your own building takes time with the COVID protocols. And mm -hmm. so you can't have an immediate answer. And then you, you're asking yourself, well, wait a minute, is Ronnie Stanley maybe going to be back in three weeks? And then I'll only have this guy for one. And so does this seem reasonable? And, uh, you know, people, you're, I think a lot of GMs are balking at that. The Ravens are good. They have four offensive tackles on the practice squad. They got to find one, two of those actually that work and try and play them. I, I honestly, I don't believe Andre Smith is the answer. But you know, maybe it's maybe it's another guy on the practice squad that uh, that can really help them, like David Sharp, maybe. What was the other guy? Is it not 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 Auden Ely? What's his name? Adrian. Adrian. Ely? Adrian, Adrian Ely. Ely. He's is he still on the practice squad, right? He's still there. Right? So on the practice squad, and he he's a developmental player, a right tackle mm -hmm. who's got some real uh, uh, you know good ability to push. What we've seen from him in the preseason. Uh, highly, you got to consider context because he's only played about the last 15, 20 snaps of some games, right. and he looked great then. But uh, you know, I think I think you need to consider context with him, and uh, he'll he'll he'll. I don't. Nobody's taken him so far, which is a little surprising to me. Uh, but then again, when you take somebody from another team's practice squad, now you have to elevate them, Rusted. and also you have to process him. So yeah. The next question on this episode of Questions from Subscribers came from my guy Brandon J. He said, "I ain't graving this over here with two questions." I saw last time my questions were too wordy, so I'll keep these two shorter. It's all good, Brandon. No worries. Number one, 
obviously we have Williams and some running backs off of yesteryear on our roster. My question may be premature, but next year we get back Gus Edwards, we get back J.K. Dobbins, and we get back Justice Hill. Real quick, before we get into this question, question that I have for you because it was something that I was confused on. With Justice Hill, they did the uh, the waived injury reserve to Justice Hill. How does that work? You know, I'm not the person to ask that question to, but if Justice if Justice Hill went only to injured reserve, meaning he stayed on the roster and he went to injured reserve, then he's still under contract for his fourth year. I didn't I I guess I'm not exactly familiar that they did a waived injured reserve, which might mean that they terminated his contract, put him on injured reserve, and then I don't know what his status is for for 2022. Yeah, I have to look that up cuz I was I was super confused on that. Um, yeah, it's just weird. Uh, and he said, do you think that any of these current running backs, as far as Gus, JK and Justice Hill, do you think that any of these current running backs will remain with us next year? Oh, and okay. I think he's, he meant the, uh, the guys like Le'Veon Bell, the elder statesman. Yeah. And the, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so from what I've seen so far, I think Latavius Murray is is probably a low percentage chance to be around next year. Uh, you know, power back, but I think he does a lot of things that the other backs uh, do in particular that, that uh, uh, I guess Gus Edwards does. But I don't see any hope for Freeman. I think he's he looks like he's done to me. Bell looked surprisingly good in that second half, both as a blocker and as a runner. So I'm, I'm interested to see what uh, he still has left, left in the tank. And I'm shocked that they uh, sat down Tyson for a week. Obviously, they're concerned about the fumbles, but um, you know the Ravens' offense needs a speed back in order to, to really have the full playbook open. And if you're not going to have Williams, by the way, I think you really got to use, use um, Duvernay as a running back or as a, as a jet motion option uh, because I think otherwise you really don't have the full set of threatening the field. I apologize mm. for the dog barking here. No, that's fine. That's fine. Um, and, and yeah, I, I, that them sitting Tyson Williams last week, I was really confused about that because I was for sure. Since we all knew Le'Veon Bell, he was he when he got activated, we knew he was going to play. But I was one thousand percent sure. I'm like, okay, it's going to be Le'Veon Bell. It's going to be Latavius Murray because he's been getting a lot of action too, and it's going to be Tyson Williams and Devonte Freeman. He's going to be the one that they sit because uh, they're not going to have four running backs active, and they got to sit somebody. So it's going to be Freeman. Why not? But when they had Tyson Williams uh, inactive. I was like, oh, okay. That I, I didn't see that coming. I didn't agree with it either. I didn't see it coming because he, yeah, those, those guys, they don't have that burst like Tyson Williams. And like you mentioned, yeah, the fumbles have been a concern. Um, but still, I just, I, I, I didn't see that coming at all. Uh, and as far as next year, I, um, let me, I, so much depends obviously on how the rest of the season goes. But yeah, Freeman, I don't see him coming back. Uh, Latavius Murray, uh, I I just I don't see it because I don't think, especially at this point in his career, um, I don't think that he'll want to take third place as a running back as just a reserve option because because you get you're getting Gus and J.K. back and and of course you hope that with just Gus and J.K. that when they do come back that there are no setbacks you got to see how they are uh, their, their, their body responds to the injuries and how they can bounce back and whatnot, um, but. Yeah, I just – I really don't see them – as of right now, I don't see any of them coming back. But, again, every, everything depends on how this season goes and how they respond to the injury. Now, the uh, second part of his question, he said, I'm not going to lie. I've been impressed with Greg Roman's play calling this year, but I do see one issue. We have major issues on third down. I would love to hear your thoughts on this, and can it be changed with coaching? Uh, getting back players that were on injury reserve, or is it a mental thing? Keep up the good work, and hopefully you and the fam are doing well. And as always, keep it clean. Now, there was a stat. I don't know if you know the stat off the top of your head, but there was a stat that they kept showing during the Broncos. Yep. About, okay, so you know. <laughs> where the Ravens were like some crate, like two for 19, or some crazy mm -hmm. number. I forget what it was on uh -oh. third down. Yeah, it's like third down and six or seven or more, and they were they were one. I think starting the game, they were one of seventeen, one of eighteen, something like that. And then they they might have converted one during the game. Um, th that's really a reflection of the offensive tackles more than anything. It's not, Lamar's having a great year throwing the ball um, on first and second down. Their play action is all available to Lamar, and he's been very effective with that. Um, on third down, when the when the other teams are pinning their ears back, 
that exposes the Ravens tackle problems to the greatest mm. possible degree. And, you know, it makes it, it makes it more difficult and teams have been willing uh, to take more chances rushing the Ravens, specifically the Broncos. That was the most extreme rush game Jackson has ever faced. But not only that, I think maybe any Raven has ever faced. Even Flacco was, you know, a, a, a guy who wanted to stay in the pocket, didn't really like to be moved. Um, he was never rushed at a 70% rate in one game, 70% five plus from the Denver Broncos in this game. Just really unusual. I'm going to say one more thing. It was disturbing that when you look at the yards per play, it got worse with every additional rusher. But I'll tell you, it's it's off the top of my head. When they rushed four, he threw for 9.8 yards per play. When they rushed five, he threw for 8.5 yards per play. All both good. When they rushed six, and they did that a lot, he rushed for 6.1, sorry, threw for 6.1 yards per play. And when they rushed seven, he threw for 3.0 yards per play on five, five plays. Five seven-man rushes in a game. You know, right there, that's telling you they're keying in on something they like about that. Mm. That's well. Those those some powerful numbers, some scary numbers too, and um, it it almost makes you think like, because you know if you have access to those numbers, you know the coaching staff has access to oh, those yeah. numbers too, and future coaching staffs will have access to those numbers as well, um, because yeah, there, it's a copycat league, and if something works against the Ravens and other teams are going to do it, and I don't know if uh, the Broncos, they watched that Lions game and they were like, oh, you know what? This is how you stop their running game because Lions did overall. I know the Ravens still ran for over 130 yards. I forget the exact number that they ran for in the Lions game. But even with that, it was still uh, not one of their better rushing performances against the Lions. Mm -hmm. Um, And then the Broncos, it, it came down to that final play for them to even get over 100 yards. Uh, so with that, um, you almost wonder if the Colts are like, okay, so this is how you stop that Ravens running game. Let, let, let's do it. Now, of course, you still got the passing game now too. Um, but you almost wonder if the Colts are looking at what Denver did uh, with rushing six and rushing seven and, and rushing more uh, to sort of mess with the Ravens uh, passing game, which has been really successful over the past overall has been really successful over the past couple of weeks. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a real possibility. And and the Colts, if you go back to the Jamal Lewis era, the Colts were one of the teams that knew they were small up front. So what they did is they did a lot of run blitzing. And so Denver effectively, by playing these extremely tight uh, set piece formations, which means their their front seven guys are all very tight to the line of scrimmage. They, uh, they had some eight-man box too, and that helped to get Justin Simmons in there and, and making some plays. But the, the thing that really I really noticed about it is it was like watching Super Bowl V again in terms of having those linebackers so close to the line of scrimmage play after play after play. And when they're willing to do that and, and shoot gaps with it uh, directly, um, that creates this very high-risk, high-reward structure on every play that Flacco has to throw. I sorry, Flacco. Jackson has to throw to beat it, but, but he, ha- but he uh, also is taking chances to do so. And so what, what I think they're, they're going to really need to do to make sure other teams don't do the same thing that the Broncos did is really have good check plays for Lamar at the line of scrimmage. So if he yeah. sees blitz, he can check to a, a very quick slant pass or other pass that will get the ball out of his hands quickly. Um, and then they're, they're also going to have to have uh, more help and more inline blocking um, even than they've had so far. So they're going to have to be willing to have some two-man and three-man patterns, uh, which normally I don't think that the, you want to limit the number of those that you have in a game very – uh, very strictly to, to essentially a two man, uh, two man kept in is what you would call max protect, uh, and and uh, you you don't want to have eight of those in a game. If you have three, if you have four, that's okay. But but you really want to limit the total number you have. Shout out to 